You are now listening to Scheduling Fate, hosted by author and counseling astrologer, Jamie McGee. For more information, please go to schedulingfate.com. Hi there, Cancer and Cancer Rising. All right, so your top three focuses this month are going to be one, allies and passions, two, you and them, and three, your habits, your health, and your wealth. Now let's talk about why. Now, as we kick off November, we have a lot of potent energy happening at the same time. And for you, this could feel pretty intense because it is connected to your passion, something that you love without condition, people, places, and things. That's where we're going to have a new moon in Scorpio. So this is a great time to ask yourself, what do you want to end or begin? Because new moons offer a fresh start. And a Scorpio new moon offers a fresh psychological new start. Let's dig in. Dance with the shadows, put everything on the table so we can transform and grow through this energy. I think by doing this is going to really help you tap into your dream, your vision, and the allies that you need to support you as we get to the other end of the month. Now, on November the 2nd, we have Mercury moving into Sagittarius. So it's going to leave that passionate area of your life and move into an area that supports your habits, your rituals, the things that you do consciously and unconsciously every day, and how that supports your overall health and wealth. Now, Mercury here is going to help you have a new insight, a new way to think and communicate about it. But something I want to keep in mind here is that between November the 7th and November the 25th, Mercury is going to be in its shadow. And what that means is once Mercury hits November the 25th, it's going to review everything that happened between then and November the 7th. And this is a bit of a blind spot for you, especially if you're a Cancer rising. So it could be that you start a new work routine, a new health routine, or you you really tap, tap into a new habit or ritual. But when that retrograde hits, you're going to have to go back and revise and revisit it. So I would just encourage you not to get too emotionally or physically attached to any of these routines that you're starting off because there's something there that you're going to dig in and and revise. Now, that doesn't mean don't start anything because often you have to start something to understand where you need to change it to adjust it to make it better. And we'll talk more about that as we get to the other end of the month. Now, on November the 3rd, we have an intense energy that we've been feeling build for a long time especially you as a Cancer and a Cancer rising, because you have Mars in your sign and Mars is in its shadow. It's going to end up retrograding back through over a lot of this energy that you've been working with through October. But on the third, the energy of Mars opposite Pluto is going to perfect. And this is in a very public area of your life. It has to do with who you are as an individual, your personal brand, how you look, your body, but also your partnerships, who you connect with one-on-one and how this impacts your home and work-life balance. Now, this 29th degree makes it feel extraordinarily urgent. And there's going to be some things that are urgent that you need to handle right now. But this is also an energy that we're going to unpack and work with all the way into the spring of next year because of where Mars and Pluto are going to be moving. So keep in mind that you can't solve everything right now. But what you can do is reflect on the lessons that you've already learned about this theme, these people, the situation, and then rise above it. And you saw something similar to this, not the 29th degree, but in that area in June of 2019 and in June of 2021. So reflecting on those periods of time are going to help you rise and move through this energy that you're working with. Now, on the same day, we're going to have Venus opposite of Jupiter. Now, Venus opposite of Jupiter is going to be, again, about those habits, those things that you do every day, but also that mind and body balance. There could be an internal epiphany that you have. I would encourage you to follow the trigger to find the treasure. But Again, if something seems too good to be true because we have these two benefics in opposition, it likely is. But that doesn't mean that there's not an opportunity there for you to grasp and really lean into a healthy ending and beginning or something that's going to support your overall health and wealth. Now, on November the 11th, Venus is going to move into Capricorn. And then it's going to highlight your partnerships, your one-to-one connections. This is a very pivotal area. And we have Pluto at the other end of the sign. So for Cancer, it almost looks like you have a new partnership coming in, but a very powerful one that's getting ready to leave because we have Pluto getting ready to leave on the 19th. But as Venus moves into this area, it's grounded, it's practical, but it's standing opposite of your sun sign or your rising sign. It's asking yourself, does this matter? Why does it matter? Is it timeless? Can we build on this? Can we take action towards something that's going to support us that really makes sense with that Venus magnetic energy? And something to keep in mind is that Venus is going to be the ruler of the full moon that happens on the 15th. Now, there's a couple of things that happen on the 15th. We also have Saturn moving out of retrograde. So when it comes to new horizons, new directions, I'm going to learn this, teach this, I believe this, this is what I'm passionate about. 
you've been reviewing something since June, but now you're getting very clear about what you want to move forward with. And you could have felt isolated at certain times because Saturn isolates you in order to elevate you when it comes to these passions and these convictions that you have. So on the 15th, you're ready to move forward, but we also have a full moon. And this full moon is around your alliances, your wishes, your dreams, other people's children or connections that you have that are connections that you have that are aligned with something that you're passionate about. We planted those seeds, remember, with the new moon on the first around things that we're passionate about. Now we're going to start to see how those blossom and bloom. But the ruler of this full moon, Venus, is in Capricorn. So it could be a partnership, a one-to-one -one connection. It helps really bring this full moon energy into light. Now, full moons have a lot of emotion and a lot of light. Even though this isn't a grounded, practical Earth sign, there's going to be some big feels here that you're working with. There's going to be something to celebrate, a seed that you planted. And now this partnership or this alliance is really starting to, to show you what it's worth. It's showing you that, yes, I am where I'm supposed to be. Now, at the same time, this full moon is conjunct Uranus. So that could be a very positive, wow, didn't expect that coming energy, or a wow, I didn't see that coming kind of energy. No matter how you perceive it, though, trust that Uranus transits, they break down so we can break through. Like, even though it doesn't seem positive in the moment, it could seem very positive, but even though it doesn't seem positive in the moment, it always lands us in a very positive area once all the pieces align again or rebuild. So chaos is creation. There could be some unrest or upheaval around your dream or your allies. But just be mindful, you know, because I know that your, your friends are your family. You have a lot of heart and emotion in everything that you do. There could be some unrest when it comes to those alliances or friendships or groups that you're associated with. Now, after that full moon on the 19th, we have Pluto for good and true moving into Aquarius. Now, Pluto has been really, again, focused on those partnerships, those one-to-one -one connections that you have, but now it's going to completely, for good and true, move into Aquarius. And this will highlight other people's money, shared wealth, resources, a very profound transformation that's connected to your ancestry, your subconscious, those hidden elements of your life. And what I mean by that is it could be something on the subconscious level it could also be just very private matters that other people don't know about. But when we get into Pluto and Aquarius, this is fixed mental energy. And Pluto is all about power dynamics. So mind over body. And it's also a unique, original, one-of-a-kind way of approaching something. That's the Aquarius archetype. Pluto is going to help you find your personal empowerment when it comes to your legacy in your home. But there could be some pretty big endings in order to have those beginnings that are more aligned with that power that Pluto is trying to help you tap into. And again, this is a marathon, not a sprint. Pluto is going to be here for the next 20 years. On November the 21st, we have the sun officially moving into Sagittarius. Now, remember, at the beginning of the month, we had Mercury move into this area. So it's sort of like when the sun moves into this, it's going to amplify overall habits, health, and wealth, the things that you do that support your health and your wealth and your, and your reputation, how you're known in the world. So when the sun comes in, it's a great time to really look at those routines. And when it comes in and lights up this area on the 21st, just a couple of days later on the 25th, that's when Mercury goes into retrograde. So that's when you're going to start to see what that sun's putting light on. Okay, yeah, these habits and routines are working for me, but these are not. And I'm going to go back and review this so it makes more sense. I'm going to work smarter and not harder, which is sometimes a hard thing to do, Cancer, because we're having Sagittarius in this area of your life. It's big. It's, it's wide open. And you're going to be invited to narrow in on what really makes sense, what really feels in flow with you and helps you feel like you're aligned with your truth and your passion, but not overwhelmed by all the different opportunities that you're working with at the same time. So definitely see that retrograde as a gift. It's helping you burn off what you don't need and light the flames of the things that you do need. All right. So that is November. If you're a Cancer and Cancer Rising, and remember, if you'd like to go deeper, there is a link for the Moon Gateway membership underneath here. That membership is less than $5 a month. It gives you discounts on reports, working with me, but it also gives you a calendar that you can look at that has written horoscopes in and more insights about all of these transits. And of course, you can dial into just the daily forecast that we have that dip into this energy that we're working with throughout the month of November. All right, see you next time.